Hi Floss Tube. my name is Angie. I'm the Second Wind Stitcher and I want to welcome you today to my very first Floss Tube. Um, I am going to do a whip parade today since this is my first one. Um, I thought that that would probably be the best introduction um, just so that everybody can get a feel for you know what kind of stitching I do um, and you know I'm I watch a lot of Floss Tube it's actually probably the main main thing that I'm watch while I'm stitching, um, and I just finally worked up the courage to do my own floss tube videos. So uh, please bear with me. I am a little nervous, but um, I'm excited to show all of the progress that I've done. So first, I thought that I would give a little introduction of myself um, and just a little bit of some of the other hobbies that I do along with cross stitching. Um, so I've been a cross stitcher for about 30 years, um, off and on. So in the past, I was what you would consider a monogamous stitcher. So I would work on a single project um, until it was completed and then go to the next project. And I found that um, I, would get, I would get bored. And so I would put it down and then not come back to it for months or sometimes years at a time. And... Um, then when I started watching Floss Tube, I discovered that I'm actually a process stitcher. Um, so I enjoy the process of stitching um, rather than a progress stitcher. Um, I can be a progress stitcher if I'm working on a gift or something like that. Um, but for the most part, I just enjoy the process of the stitching. Um, and like finally realizing that I can give myself permission to have multiple projects because I am a process stitcher. And so if I get bored with one project, I can find another project that is going to um, satisfy the urge for the stitching. Cause I, I really do, I stitch most every day. Um, you know, people, sometimes life happens and I can't, I can't stitch that day, but for the most part I stitch every day. Um, so some of my other hobbies, I um, am a knitter a little bit, not a lot. Uh, knitting for me is the uh, kind of no thinking uh, craft that I can do when maybe I'm not in the mood for counting a pattern, um, which means I, and I'm not good at like retaining complicated knitting patterns. So I knit a lot of kind of simple rectangles. Um, so blankets and scarves and things like that. Um, and they're usually very simple, you know, like two to four row, row repeat um, patterns. So nothing elaborate. Um, I love seeing other people's knitting projects that are beautiful and elaborate, but it is not, um, it is not for me. Uh, and that's okay. We all have to find joy in our hobbies. And if, you know, for me, having a super complicated knitting pattern uh, really just frustrates me because I tend to lose count. I'm also not, um, I'm not good at like reading the stitches to, to like understand like where I may have made a mistake to go back and fix it. Um, and I'm sure that comes, you know, if I were to become a more uh, regular knitter, but um, cross stitch is really, is really my first love. So that's what I tend to go, go back to. Um, I also do a very smidge of diamond painting. Um, I have a lot of diamond paintings, but I really only have like one or two started and I've actually not ever completed one. Um, I recently moved. Um, so I used to live in an apartment um, and then I bought my, actually my parents' house um, back in May. And you know, my apartment, um, I also work from home. And so I didn't have like a table, like I didn't have a kitchen table. My table literally was my desk. Um, just because of space when, you know, like, um, when the pandemic happened, um, we were already kind of hybrid, um, where we could work three days at home, um, per week and then the other two days in the office. And then when, uh, COVID hit, they were like, nope, we're gonna, everybody's just remote now. Um, and so I really had to make sure that I had a dedicated workspace, um, just for my own personal well-being, um. And so that became my, oh, pardon me, my dining room table. So I didn't, I didn't have like a flat surface to be able to diamond paint on. Um, now that I have purchased the house, I actually have two 
kitchen tables. I have my own kitchen table and then um, the kitchen table that actually it came with the house. Um, and I say that because I'm actually the third generation in this house, which I think is actually really exciting. Um, my parents bought it from my mom's parents. And when they bought the house from my grandparents, uh, the kitchen table stayed with the house. It's, um, it's definitely an, an antique, but it is an old sturdy war horse that I absolutely love. Um, and I'm hoping to at some point in the future to uh, refinish it and make it just beautiful again. It is a little worn and, and tired looking, um, but it, yeah, I'm getting, I'm waxing nostalgic about a kitchen table, but I love it. It's, it's just part of the family. Um, so I do, I do now have a flat surface that I can do some more diamond painting on. Um, but, and I probably will, I'm trying to, um, arrange some crafty days with like my nieces and some of my sisters-in-law and my mom so that we can all kind of get together and do some crafty days. And those are probably the days that I would do diamond painting. Um, so I'm working on that. We've already had one. It was really fun. Um, so yeah. And then as far as any other hobbies, I do a lot of reading. Um, I am more of a fantasy um, reader. I, the very first fantasy novel that I ever read, it was a, it's a young adult. It's by Anne McCaffrey. It's from, it's called Dragon Song. Um, and then there's two, it's a trilogy. Um, so I was in a, you know, like a book competition in, in grade school. And this was one of the books that we had to read for this book competition. And I just absolutely fell in love with the fantasy genre and have been, um, that's again, kind of my main focus. Like I love magic and dragons and, you know, I do love the epic stories that you get a lot of that in fantasy. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Brandon Sanderson and the Stormlight Archive. Um, I enjoy the Wheel of Time books by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson finished that series. If you're not familiar, um, I'm also, I do like, um, pardon me for bumping the camera, I do like um, Laurel K. Hamilton and Kim Harrison and Jim Butcher, so if you are interested in fantasy and don't know where to start, all of those authors are fun. Um, so just, I, I do enjoy reading. Um, I've also been on a bit of a um, health journey the last couple of years. Um, so I have been working with a personal trainer and um, working out anywhere from two to three times at the gym with my trainer and getting stronger um, with the weight training, which has been amazing. Um, I It has really helped um, with my mental health as well, which I think is important um, because in the past I didn't really um, prioritize exercise and, um, it, it's a, it's, it's been a really good thing. So I'm really glad that I finally, um, started that journey. And, um, I mean, there are still you know, weeks where I'm just like, Oh, I don't want to go to the gym and I don't, and that's okay. Um, I have also learned to give myself some grace. Um, so that's, that's kind of me, what I do in my free time. Um, so let's dive in. We'll get started um, with the whip parade. Um, just one more thing. Thank you. Thank you again for joining. Um, I probably can't say that too many times. I just really, really appreciate it. Um, I know that there are so many of us that have this love of this craft and um, I'm excited to share, share it with everybody. Um, I've enjoyed seeing seeing all of the the fellow floss tubers um and and their projects it's just it's just so fun it's and very enabling i don't know if um I, i'm sure i'm not the only one but i love seeing other people's projects and going yeah i want to i want to work on that i want to get that um okay so enough with the with the ramble so the first project um i am going to go mostly in chronological order I, um, there's a few projects that I have kind of towards the end that are not in chronological order, but I'll explain that more when we get to that. Um, so the first project that I have is, um, called Japan Garden. It is, um, artwork by Dominic Davison and the designer is Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, so this is a full coverage. It's a pretty big piece, but, um, I saw this 
and I just, I fell in love with it. I love the cherry blossoms and the beautiful red trees and the pagodas. Um, you know, I want to, I want to go to Japan someday and see a scene similar to this because I know that it exists. So this is, this is the first one. Um, I started this on uh, February 9th of 2022. Um, I think I said that this is a birthday start. Um, I started this on 18 count Ada. It is a mystic gray fabric. So um, I tend to, so I think because, you know, before like Pattern Keeper and before gridded fabric was a thing, I just got so used to not having grid. Um, like I didn't even know that gridded fabric existed until I started watching Floss Tube. So I um, I have a few projects that are on gridded fabric, but for the most part, um, I just use regular old regular old Ada. Um, so this is an 18 count um, Mystic Gray. I think it's just as wide art. I don't think it's anything special. Um, so here is what I have so far. Um, so not a lot, but um, you know, there's a lot of confetti um, throughout this piece and definitely this, this, I'm an upper left hand starter. Um, so this piece, you can definitely see there's quite a lot of confetti. Um, so I do have a little bit of stats. So, um, as of today, I have 1,969 stitches out of 2,007, or I'm sorry, 277,500 stitches. And I am at 0.71 percent so not even at one percent yet um because this is it's a big it's not a it's not a super size um but it is a pretty big piece um and then I do um I don't have a master floss um set so I do tend to kit up my projects with all of the floss that they need um this is a this is a bag from Kaylee Ten Stitch. Um, I love it. I have a bunch of her bags, so you'll see a lot more of these. Um, so she's the sewing shop .ca. Um, I, I absolutely love, love her bags. Um, so I do have all the floss. I have like several floss monsters in here. Um, and that's, that's how I kit up pretty much all of my projects is, is they have, they all have their own floss. Um, and I know it's not very, uh, economical but it is easier for my brain so I just go with it okay so apologize for the rustling I did try to unzip everything um but I you know like I said I have a big list of projects here that we're gonna go through so the next one that I have is um a little project is called uh phases of the moon so it's a pretty simple little pattern I got off of Etsy. I'm sorry, I don't know who. Um, it's from Silhouette Stitch. I think they're still on Etsy, um, but I don't know who the actual like artist is. Um, but I just, I love the moon. Um, so I was really excited to find a little pattern. Um, that has that has these so this is where I'm at so far um, so this is at 52.44% it is pattern keeper compatible um, so this is 1416 uh, stitches out of 2700 stitches so I'm at 52.44% um, so this is just a little you know a little project that I kind of pull out Every once in a while, it's not certainly not a focus piece. It probably wouldn't take me very long, very long if I did make it a focus piece to finish. Um, but yeah, I just um, I pull it out. I do. Um, I also do whip go boards. Um, we'll talk about that some more um, towards the end of the video um, in like plans. Um, but I do. I have two whip go boards. I have a full coverage whip whip go board. Thank you, Jesse Marie. Um, so if any of you don't know what WhipGo is, um, it is kind of like a bingo board um, where you can put goals for various projects on the bingo board. And then Jesse Marie from Jesse Marie Does Stuff will um, pull numbers uh, for the WhipGo for each, each month. 
Um, and then whichever month pulls the number 13, she'll pull three numbers. And some people will do um, number 13 as like a free space or, it, you know, it's it's really whatever, however you want to do it. Um, Jessie Marie is all about your board, your rules. So however you want to, however you want to do that. Okay. Um, so my next project, oh, um, I forgot to tell you this bag is from Lake House Stitch Co. So um, she is on Etsy, I believe. This is, it's a really pretty bag. It's got this lovely um, kind of, again, the pagodas and the bridges. I just, it's, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous bag. Perfect for little projects. Um, I also use a lot of the Amazon project bags because um, they're easy. So my next project is um, the Hamsa Mandala. So this is from Ink Circles, Tracy Horner. I love Ink Circles. Um, they're so beautiful. Um, and I just, I loved this. Um, I loved this pattern. Um, I love kind of what the, the Hamsa kind of stands for as far as like protection. Um, so I'm kind of excited to get this one finished and hung up in my house um, near the doorway. So this is, I'm about, about a quarter of the way done. Um, maybe a little less, but I have the first, the first Hamsa completed. Um, I don't know. I think it's, um, mislaid pages. And then, so, uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy has, um, her like ink circles round Robin that she's hosting. I am not a part of it, but I, you know, like kind of follow it a little bit. And Miss Laid Pages is doing this pattern, um, but in purples. And I was like, oh, I want that color convert. Like, I'm almost tempted to restart it um, with the purple color con conversion because purple is absolutely uh, one of my favorite colors. But I also really like the green. Um, this is on a 16 count Ada from Picture This Plus called Serene. Um, and it is just a very minty, lovely green. I don't know. I think it's it's coming across pretty well on camera. Um, but yeah, I I ooh, so tempted to see if I can get the color conversion from Miss Lay Pages because um, it's beautiful. So oh, and I started this on uh, two twenty two twenty two. I really felt like having a mandala on a date that had like all the all the twos all the same number was a little fitting. I know that sounds really uh, geeky, but I'm totally for it. Um, so yeah, two twenty two twenty two for a Hamsa mandala, um, and I do I love that project. Um, it is also pr uh, most of my projects are on my Wicca board. Um, so sorry. I'm just trying to keep things relatively organized so that when I put everything away, um, it's not chaos. I don't have, um, percentages on this one because I am using the paper pattern and I do not track stitches on paper patterns. I just, I, I don't have it in me to do it. Um, I totally admire people who do, um, so another Amazon bag, um, but I don't have it in me. So my next project, uh, that I started on March 28th of 2022 is called, it's a mini queen of hearts and it is from heaven and earth design. It is by Rachel Anderson. Um, I just, I love this little red fairy. I think she's lovely. Um, I don't care for the, um, Alice, like really overbearing queen of hearts. In fact, um, Alice is not my, one of my favorites fairy tales. Maybe it's because I never actually read the book um, as a kid. It just was not one that came up for me. Um, and so I don't, you know, I know like Alice is super, super popular and it's just never been, been a favorite of mine. But I loved this one because she's just such a pretty red fairy. Um, so this is also on an 18 count mystic gray. And um, this is where I'm at so far. So a relatively decent start. Um, I am at 4.21%. So that's 26,000 or, oh my gosh, 2,624 stitches out of 62,325. Um, so not too bad. 
um, progress on this one, um, considering all the other projects that I also have. Yeah, so. She's lovely. Okay. My next project is also by Tracy Anderson for the artist, and it is also a heaven and earth design. Um, I don't know if you're sensing a pattern or a trend. I certainly am. I do love heaven and earth designs, um, but they're not the only ones that I stitch on. So this is called Iridescent. Um, and again, like these blues and purples and that crescent moon in there and that lovely little baby dragon. Oh, I just love it. Um, so this one is also on 18 count um, and it is on a silver gray Ada. And I started this on April 7th of 2022. So I'm really um, just up in this, you know, like upper left corner. So I'm doing doing all the background here. Yeah, up here. So lots and lots of background. Um, I know it'll get more interesting. It'll get more interesting, but sometimes it's nice to have some block stitching before you get into, into all the crazy confetti. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at so far. I probably um, should be doing a little more feathering so that I don't end up with lines, but it, it's not not looking too bad so far as far as lines. Um, so then some stats on this one. I have 4,528 stitches out of 184,800 stitches. So I am at 2.45% with this one. So again, not, not too bad. Okay. Um, my next Sorry, I dropped my pen. Um, my next piece is not a full coverage. I'm shocked. Um, this one is a long dog sampler. Um, and I love long dogs. I have so many of their patterns. Um, I only have two started. But, oh, the, the newest one that came out, oh, it's beautiful. The Saga. Um, I would love to do... Like I'm, I'm really thinking about doing pointed fifth, um, and the saga on the same, not the same piece of fabric, but the same, um, fabric color. Um, and then trying to do almost like some mirror image colors. I don't know. I'm still kind of contemplating that one, but anyway, I digress. So this one is, um, resistance is futile. It is a band sampler. It is on 18 count cozy cove Ada from Fortnite fabric. I started this on April 28th of 2022. Um, this color that I'm stitching in is, I, it doesn't actually have a name. It is a misdyed color from Color and Cotton. Um, so I picked up a big, like three packages of this, yarn, of this um, color. And so it is this, you know, like beautiful variegated red, um, so it's got that kind of light in the middle and then the ends. I love, I, I love how it is stitching up on this fabric. Um, it's beautiful. I don't have stats on this. Um, I had switched, um, my, uh, device for pattern keeper, um, from one tablet to another. And when I, this one, uh, so I don't know if all of you are aware, but sometimes long dog samplers, do not import quite correctly into Pattern Keeper and you end up with like either extra columns or extra rows depending on how you did um, the offset, um, you know, like the overlap on the pages. And when I tried to import the progress PDF, it or, or like the progress, um, so you know, you can export your progress out of Pattern Keeper and then re-import it, you know, if, if you're trying to recover from a disaster on your on your device or something like that um and because it didn't you know like the it just didn't match and so I have not had a chance to go back and um re like re-highlight all of my stitches um because I part of me have not worked on this since um I did the conversion to the new tablet um 
luckily I'm not super far along um, and it shouldn't take me too long to go through and highlight this, but I will go through and make sure that like I'll find whichever columns or rows are sort of duplicated and highlight them um, so that when I get to it, I know, oh, I don't stitch this column or I don't stitch this row. Um, the other long dog that I have going had a similar situation. Um, we'll get to that when when that one comes up. But I, I love this. I love this color. I think it's going to be beautiful. I'm super excited about it. Um, but yeah, and I love this mist eye. I, I, go, I do like um, getting some of these mist eye colors um, because you know that it's going to be super unique. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, that's that one. I, I love it. Um, okay. So my next one is, is a full coverage. It is not a heaven and earth design. It is um, from Pain, Pain Free Craft. Um, this is also in a Kaylee 10 stitch bag. Um, so Sewing Shop CA. Love it. Um, I am... I am not a Star Wars or a Star... Like, I love Star Wars and I love Star Trek. I'm not one of those people that is, like, one or the other. Um, you can't... can Like, they're two totally different worlds. Um, but I do... I did love this this bag, so I had to, I had to get it. Um, so this project um, I, was inspired by um, Darren Dizzy Stitcher and Elaine Ellie Willie Stitcher for their stitch along. I think it's Stanley's Dragons sale. Um, so I did go through and <laughs> pick out. I actually um, have one other dragon that you'll see later. Um, so this is the Sake Dragon, and I just like all oh, the colors on this. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love the blues. I love the detail on that teacup. Oh my gosh. I love it. Um, so I actually, I feel like I've got some pretty good progress on this. Um, so this is, like I said, Sake Dragon, Pain Free Crafts. Stanley Morrison is the artist. This is on 18 Count Gray Ada. I started this on June 1st, 2022 for the Stanley's Dragons sales, uh, sale. Um, right now I have 5,992 stitches out of 1,000 or 100,000, 118th. Oh my gosh. I can, I can do numbers really, you guys. I can, um, 118,800 stitches for that's the total. And I'm at 5.04%. So actually pretty good progress. Um, you can see here, like some of the spines are coming in. Um, so I'm excited. I should be getting to some more color here pretty soon. So he's beautiful. I love him. <clears throat> we have so many talented art, um, artists and designers out there. It's just like such a, such a wealth. We're so lucky. Um, okay. So my next one is my other long dog. Um, and this one is the You Belong to Me. Um, Sorry, I forgot that I didn't have a cover sheet for the Resistance is Feudal Band Sampler. I tr I'll try and get one um, for next time. So this is the You Belong to Me. Um, I do love uh, the pyramids, this kind of Egyptian, these Egyptian motifs. Um, yeah, this is beautiful, as are all of the Long Dog Samplers. Um, but this one, like I saw it and I was like, oh, I have to get that one. Um, and then, so here is my progress. So this is on um, 18 count spending amnesia from Mystic Fabrics, who you guys, I love Misty's fabric. If you um, have not checked out her, her fabric, please do, because she is a beautiful dyer. Um, I'm actually in her fabric of the month club and I get um, a fat half of her 32 count linen and then I also get a fat half of the 20 count, Ada. Um, but that'll probably change next year. Um, I'll probably just go down to the 32 count linen. I have a huge, huge stash of 18 count Ada. Um, that is typically my preferred fabric to work on. Um, 
I, I do struggle with the higher counts. Um, anyway, back to this, the You Belong to Me. Um, so this is the Sooks for You PR124. Um, and it is just beautiful. I like the Sooks for You is gorgeous. Now, I'm a little unconventional. Whoops, that just totally fell right off. I'm a little unconventional with how I handle my silks. Um, so some people, you know, they get a little, like they kind of fussy cut it. Um, I do not. And I'm naughty and I, to <laughs> I totally double it up um, and do a loop start um, with this, with a full strand of this. So I only make one cut on my hank um, and then I double it. And I'm okay with that. I know that some people would say that's not how you're supposed to handle um, variegated floss, but I kind of feel like you, it's, it's your work. You can do whatever the heck you want with it. And if it makes you happy, then that's what's important. And this is what makes me happy. So, um, but yeah, it goes from these like beautiful, this like teal to this purple and kind of back up to, it's like a more of a dusty teal. Oh, I just, it's beautiful. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so that is You Belong to Me. Um, and I, for a little while, was having a hard time putting it down. And then I found, uh, I found an error. So I had to do some frogging, which we all know is not our favorite thing to do. But I'm glad I did it because it, it definitely, um, m like, yeah, I had to fix it. So I'm at seven now. This is a little skewed because again, I have some, um, I think they're rows. I think they're extra rows. And so I did go through and kind of highlight those extra rows so that when I get to them, I know not to stitch the duplicate. Um, so these are slightly skewed numbers be just because of those extra, extra rows in there. But as of right now, I have um, 3,245 stitches out of 41,900 47 stitches and that puts me at about 7.74 percent which is probably right around seven percent if you take away um those extra rows that don't really <laughs> don't really exist okay um my next project is um this is the wrong one. Oh no okay uh okay. Pause, please. i am back i apologize um I clearly had one out of order. So this next one is a heaven and earth design. The artist is Amy Stewart. You'll probably see some more of Amy Stewart. I think we all enjoy her work for the most part. Um, this one is called Bird Garden. Um, also probably, I think um, eCrafting in Colorado did the kind of uh, wider version of this one called, it's like birds and blossoms or something like that. Um, I'm doing just the bird garden version. Sorry for the glare. Um, this is going to be a gift for my parents. Um, so one of the things that when I, we were talking about me buying the house and etc. So I do live kind of out in the country and they were very concerned on if I was going to continue to feed the birds because they have been feeding the birds for many years. They have like six different types of feeders and oh, it's a bunch of drama. I have not been feeding them this summer, um, but I may put out some new feeders this winter. Um, but I was like, I'm not, <laughs> I, I do love the birds, but I don't think I love them quite as much as they do. Um, so this is where I'm at so far on Bird Garden. I love the sky. It is so pretty. Um, this is on a 20 count gray Ada and I started this on November 8th of 2022. Um, as far as stats are concerned, I'm at 4,574 stitches out of 350,000 stitches, which puts me at 1.31%. So sorry. Um, so yeah, lots of work left to go. Lots of work left to go on this one. Um, I should probably at some point make this a focus piece. Um, cause I really would like, like to be able to gift it to them. 
Um, I did give them uh, for Christmas last year a couple of much smaller cross stitches that they really enjoyed. So um, this is definitely, uh, my mom knows about it. I don't think I've told my dad. Um, so she's aware that it's going to take a long time, but <laughs> she, she loved it when she saw it. So that's, that's always nice. Um, I didn't think, you know, like they, they actually live really close by. Um, so they drop in, um, on a, on a somewhat regular basis. So my next piece, um, is a mill hill which um, I have a lot of Mill Hill kits. I've only really ever finished one before. Um, and I'm, I'm still trying to decide if I like them or not. Um, but this one is going to be um, probably a gift for my best friend. It's called Holiday Flamingo. She loves flamingos. I thought this was super cute um, and one that she would enjoy. I am not very far on this. Um, so this is on, you know, like all the kitted um, whatever that comes uh, with it's the perforated paper. Um, so not super far on it. I just have the start of the wreath um, around the flamingo's neck. Um, I started this on uh, November 14th of 2022. Um, probably again, it's, you know, Mill Hills, this one, especially pretty tiny. It's, it only takes a couple days to stitch and even do the beading. Um, I just, it hasn't called to me and it's, I think it's actually not on my wiggle board. I should probably put it on there for next year. Um, okay. My next piece is, um, I have an earth design again. So, uh, this one was inspired by Jessie Marie does stuff. I saw her working on this pattern. So this is personal sunshine. Um, it is from Hade. It is unfortunately retired. So Jeremiah Kettner is the artist and he, um, no longer has his artwork with heaven and earth design, but I just like this, the wistfulness and, you know, the idea of this sun pushing away those clouds and giving her some hope. I don't know. It just really, really spoke to me. Um, so I had to, I had to get it when I saw, um, Jesse Marie working on this. So, um, <clears throat> I have this on 18 count shark fin Ada. Um, I think this is also probably a Fortnite fabrics. Um, I started this on December 5th of 2022 and I am, 1.76%. So that's 18 or 1,864 out of 106,000 stitches. Um, so, yep. Like I said, I always start in the upper left hand corner. It's just the way it, it works for my brain. Um, I also like, I don't park really. Um, also doesn't work for my brain. I know that some people like you can't stitch without parking. Um, because it, it's just, it's so interesting how everybody's brain works just a little differently. Um, I tried, I did try to do parking and I immediately was like, no, I can't have all this like crazy stuff on my oh, hanging. I can't have the hanging threads. It just, it really stressed me out. So I don't park and that's okay. Again, that's okay. No shade on people who do park. Um, again, I'm all about whatever works for you. Um, whatever makes you happy. Um, my next project is uh, sort of part of a stitch log. Um, I don't know if any of you watch Alara or um, again Dizzy Darren Dizzy Stitcher. Um, they have a little competition going on, and Alara is currently working on all of the black on this project. Um, so this is from Pain Free Crafts artwork by Ann Stokes. It is the Dragons of the Sabbat. Um, it is a massive, massive piece. It is gorgeous. I am also um, stitching all of the black. And this is one that I do kind of just keep in my whip bucket um, that I have in my living room. And I pull it out like if I'm like, okay, I just can't, I can't count. <laughs> I, can't, I can't count tonight. Um, you can pull this out and just work on the black um, without having to think a whole lot about it. So uh, definitely don't have nearly as much as Alara's done. Um, she is a wicked fast stitcher. 
Um, this is on um, 28 count, easy count. Oh, by the way, almost all of my pieces are um, two over one or two over two if it's linen, full cross. Um, <clears throat> I prefer full cross, but for this one on the 28 count, I did decide to do two over one tent stitch. Um, so and that's just, I mean, you can see the coverage is still really, really good. Um, I'm not, not disappointed with that at all. Um, I, like I, you know, said earlier, I struggle a little bit with the higher count fabric. Um, I had a bunch of pieces that you've already seen that had been started on like a 25 count and I had to restart them on either an 18 or 20 count because I just could not handle doing the 25 count. Um, so this with the, with the tent stitch is more doable. Um, but it is the exception for me and not the rule. So this was started on, um, December 16th of 2022 and I have 9,570 stitches out of 604,000 stitches, which puts me at 1.58%. So, um, yeah, this one, like I said, just kind of keep it, keep it in my whip bucket um, and pull it out when I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I just want to stitch some black um, and make some progress because you can make quite a bit of progress um, when you're only stitching a single color in big blocks of big blocks of color. <clears throat> okay, my next one is um, another Ink Circles. So this is the Elemental Dragon Air. So there are four of these, one for each of the elements. Um, I've already stitched water. I've already finished water. And so the next one that I pulled was Air. Um, so this one is on 16 count Spring Breeze, which is another Mystic Fabric um, fabric. Um, I have a very small little start on this. I started it on 1221 of 22. Um, so this is two of four. I do plan on stitching the entire series. Um, I don't have stats on this one because it's not in Pattern Keeper. Um, I did get the paper pattern for this one. And, you know, like, I'm comfortable working on paper patterns because I did it for, you know, like, the first <laughs> over 20 years of my cross-stitching career. Um but I do love Pattern Keeper, so, um, but for, for things like this, when they're not full coverage, I don't mind working off of a, off of a paper pattern. So I love, I do, I love Tracy Horner and Ink Circles. Um, I have several of hers kitted up and ready to go, um, for future <laughs> because I love them. Um, okay. My next project, um, oh, I had totally have been forgetting to talk about the project bags. So this one I think came in, um, it came in a, one of the mystery boxes from Be Stitch Me, um, probably uh, like one of the winter boxes. Um, so I'm not sure who actually made the bag, but um, that's where I got this one. And the one that Dragons of the Sabbat is in, um, is it's actually a knitting project bag. Um, but I love this fabric. It's nice and big. Um, so it can hold, you know, like all of the threads and stuff. Um, and it will like, it will hold the, the 11 by 17 Q snap. Um, this one, I'm trying to remember the designer. I want to say, oh, she's on Etsy. I'm sorry. I don't remember. It's like something about grandma. I don't remember. Oh, I apologize. I don't keep good notes on the on the project bags that I have, um, but this one is in a Kaylee Kaylee ten stitch bag. Like I said, you're gonna see a lot of those. Um, this project is um, from Pink Pain Free Crafts. This is um, artwork by Lars Stewart. It is now retired. I did get it as a kit from Pain Free. Um, love it. Love their kits. Um, I also have a bunch of their patterns. Um, but I was like, Ooh, this one is getting retired and I wanted to try and get a kit from pain free crafts, which I don't regret. Um, and this is beautiful. So this is called day to night Africa. Um, this is on a 25 count 
even weave, um, easy count. I'm also um, not a huge fan of Lugata. Um, I would prefer linen over an even weave, which surprised me. Um, so maybe maybe that was the other reason why I struggled um, struggled with the 25 count when I was doing all of my projects is that I just, I struggled with the even weave for some reason. Um, probably I'd stitch on Ada for so, so long. And I'm just now kind of in the last year for making the foray into linen. Um, but I do prefer linen over even weave. So this is 25 count even weave. Um, I am also doing this one two over one tent stitch. Um, but I love it. This was my Christmas start and I am, at 4,446 stitches out of 301,600 stitches, which puts me at 1.47%. So I feel like I have more than that done, um, but I don't. This is just, this is still just up in that beautiful uh, dawn. Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, really glad I got to snag it before before it retired. Um, and you know, if you're ever wanting to spoil or treat yourself, um, the pain free crafts kits are, they're lovely. So thank you, Sarah. Okay. Oh, I have a little bit of a crash here. Sorry for the, for the leaning. Um, okay. This next one, uh, another heaven and earth design this is a pattern by Amy Stewart it's not it's not one of the ones that you see a whole lot um, but I love this it's called mini Arcadia so um, it is one of their mini patterns I did look at the rendering on this and was fine um, I think because you know it's a pretty dark pattern um, but this gives me um, Lord of the Rings vibes where, you know, the, in Return of the King, when, um, Gandalf sends, uh, Pippin to light the fires, um, and, and they, you know, the fires kind of go across the mountain range to Rohan. Um, for some reason, I know it's, it just gives me that vibe. And I, again, it kind of has a little bit of that Asian sort of pagoda feel as far as the buildings are concerned. Um, so I love this one. I did originally start this on 25 count and restarted it. So you're getting the restart dates. I'm, I did not um, keep any of the information from when I originally started. Um, so this one is on 18 count. I lost the information on the fabric for this. So I don't have it. I know it's an 18 count. I'm guessing it's probably a Fortnite fabric. Um, fabric. I started, restarted this on um, December 30th of 2022, and um, I am at 2,358 stitches out of 75,400, which puts me at 3.13%. Um, so again, you know, I know people have talked about this too, is that it's so fun where, you know, it's up close, it just looks like blobs, it doesn't look like much, but you can actually start seeing um, kind of that that mountain and the side of the building come into play. I think this is going to be really pretty. Um, I'm looking forward to working on this. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to working on all of these. Who are we kidding? <clears throat> They're not UFO'd for a reason, right? Okay, so that's that one. Okay, and then my next one um, is in a, again, in a Kaylee Tunstitch bag. Um, this one is beautiful. Oh. Love it. Kaylee, you do amazing work if she ever sees this. Um, so this one is my very first Bella Filipina. Um, this is Meg Wayan. And um, I picked this up as part of the Teresa Made Me Do It Sal by um, Teresa Little Stitcher. So uh, I must admit, I think Teresa, Teresa was one of the first uh, floss tubers that I ever uh, watched. And I still do love watching her. Um, she's amazing and just so much fun. Um, I hope her, 
her little body has is doing well. I know she had to have a second surgery. Anyway, well, random. Um, so this is Meg Wayan by Bella Filipina. I am not very far on this. Um, you can actually tell, like, <laughs> clearly I don't um, take most of my projects out of their... <laughs> out of their Q-snap because I'm terrible. Um, I, I just buy more Q-snaps because I'm silly. Um, so this is on 16 Count Aurora by Mystic Fabric. It is gorgeous. This is a New Year's New Day, New Year's Day start. So um, this year, 1-1-23, part of the Teresa Made Me Do It sale. Um, clearly not very far. And I don't have numbers again because I it is a paper, paper pattern. So, um, but she will get put on the Whipco board again, um, next year and hopefully I can make some more progress. Um, you know, sometimes the dress, like getting the folds of the dress, it just can be <laughs> like a bit of a snooze, um, to do, to do that. Um, so then... I'm going to have to go get my next basket after this. This is um, Heaven and Earth Design. Oops, that's upside down. So this is Story Keep Oriental Courage, and um, it is by Leanne Seed. This is a tiny, tiny one. I actually don't know what the this is story kept from. Um, I tr looked around and couldn't find it. I'm sure I just didn't look hard enough. Um, but I just, I you know... As I've said, I really do enjoy a lot of like the Asian themed um, patterns and things like that. And this one, because it's pretty tiny, um, I you know probably will be my first full coverage finish. Um, to be honest, so this is where I'm at so far. Um, which this is as wide as the piece gets. Um, so like that's it. That's as wide as it will be. Um, and then I, I might have to move the Q snap down once, I think, um, cause it is quite a bit longer than it is wide, but I'm at 3,771 stitches out of 17,850. And that puts me at 21.13%. So I have a bunch done on this. Um, I'm trying to decide, um, next year, you know, with, there's some, um, Facebook groups that do full, you know, like full coverage fanatics and things like that. And they have challenges. Um, I'll be curious to see if they do the color challenges again. Um, I tried doing that last year and then decided to mostly focus on Whipco. Um, so that's been my main thing, but I'm so sorry for the road noise. Um, it doesn't matter where I'm at in the house. It's terrible. My house sits pretty close to the road. And um, like I said, I live out in the country and we've got a bunch of like um, windy, hilly roads that motorcycles and UTVs like to drive on. And sometimes I get like huge packs of UTVs and motorcycles <laughs> driving past my house, um, which I'm not like overly thrilled about, but it's a public road. So sorry for that. Um, so I'm going to pause again and go and get my next basket. Okay. I am back with my next basket. Um, so this next piece is another heaven and earth design. Um, this project was definitely inspired by, um, Jemima, the rocking stitcher. So, um, this is, um, super size, uh, max color, uh, water hole master by David Penfound. Um, I <sighs> love like watching, um, Jemima and the progress that she's making on her water hole master. I just like, oh, I was like, I have to do this piece. Um, you know, like when she started getting into this section with the elephant and like how the light comes in and just like, oh, I was just, I was in love. Um, so this one is, um, on 20 count easy guide. I started it on January 26th of this year and this is where I'm at. I'm not very far at all. Um, so I'm really up in that, you know, up in the trees. Um, I have 1,192 stitches out of 661,338 stitches. I am at 0.18%. Um, 
and this is a lot of fabric uh, that I have wrangled. Um, <laughs> but oh, I'm I I I am excited to continue working on this. Sometimes it it does feel a little daunting, but um, it's on my whipco board. I put my stitches in. Um, I, you know, like I'm super excited to continue to watch J um, Jemima's progress. I know she's kind of taken a step back um, and isn't doing floss two quite as often as she used to, um, which I totally respect that. Um, we all have to do what's best for our mental health. And, you know, if that means stepping back from doing floss two because it was stressing you out, then that's what that means. Um, but I hope she continues to share on Instagram. Um, because I do love seeing her progress. Um, that was also in a Kaylee tent stitch bag, um, as is this one. So this is another Kaylee tent stitch. This is um, this is the it's a one of the quick stitches from one of the bookshelves by Amy Stewart. Um, so this is Pride and Prejudice. It is the color expansion. It's not max color, but it's the color expansion. So Heaven and Earth design. Um, my best friend is a huge Jane Austen fan and I saw this one and I was like, Oh, I have to start that for her. Um, she also knows about it. So this is not a surprise in case she's watching. Um, but I am excited to do this one for her cause, and it's a beautiful stitch. I did restart this one. Um, again, this is one that I started on 25 count. I was not loving it. I just like, it made me dread picking it up and working on it. So I was like, that's silly because I really want to be able to give this to my best friend someday. And so I restarted it, um, on 18 count. It's, this is an 18 count Ada. Um, again, I'm sorry. I don't have the dyer, again, probably it's a Fortnite fabric. Um, I did buy a whole bunch of Fortnite fabric um, back when they um, were doing a little, um, I don't, I mean, there, there was some drama in their relationship, which has kind of impacted the business, which is unfortunate, but I do hope that he um, is getting healthy and well and that, um, you know, it, and if this isn't, you know, what he continues to do, that's okay. I did enjoy a lot of their fabric. So, um, I suspect this is a Fortnite fabric, but again, I lost, I lost my little tag that had it, had the information on. So I apologize. Um, and for those of you who are like, why are you using, um, hand dyed fabric on full coverage? Um, the reason is one, I have a huge stash of it Two, I don't mind. Cause I don't, you know, like I actually don't care for some of the gridded fabric because it's white and I don't like stitching on plain white like even gridded plain white fabric. Um, and to like, while I'm stitching this, it gives me something, you know, pretty to look, <laughs> to look at. So it, it's okay for me. Um, I know that's not for everybody, but it's okay for me. So I restarted this on, um, February 13th of this year. <clears throat> I'm not quite to where I was, um, before, like, I think I had like all of this piece filled in. Um, so I'm not quite caught up to where I was, um, when I restarted it, but I'm at 2,698 stitches out of 1,000, 114,000 stitches. And that puts me at 2.37%. Um, so yes, this is beautiful. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, okay. My next project, um, this is in a Kaylee, in a Kaylee 10 stitch bag because I actually got the kit from Kaylee. Um, so the sewing shop CA, she is, um, also has some of her patterns, um, kitted up. And this one is by an artist named Alexandra Gallagher. Um, it is called Many Hands. So I don't know if you can see, like, I just loved the image of the diversity of the hands, um, working together and I, like, I, yeah, I loved, I loved this image. Um, and so when I saw that she had it as a kit, I was like, yes, please send that to me. Now I did start it. It is a very, very meager start. Sorry. I'm trying to put stuff away. Um, 
it is a very meager start. And mostly that's because it has not been called for WIPCO yet this year. Um, so I literally just have a tiny little bit in the upper left hand corner. Um, this is only 254 stitches, which is actually probably the smallest start that I have on any, maybe, maybe there's one other that has a smaller start than this. Um, so 254 stitches of 2,000, 243,542 stitches, and I'm at 0.10%. So just a baby start. But like I said, this has not been called on my Whipco board yet this year, which is part of why I have such a little baby start. But I got it, and I was like, oh, I want to start it. Um, but yeah, this is, so um, as part of the kit, she sent you the project bag and then um, all, the, all the flosses. So it's lovely. Okay, my next project is um, a Gecko Rouge project, but it is in a Kaylee 10 stitch bag. I know you're shocked, right? Just, just so surprised. Um, so this one is called Solstice Pentre, and it is by Dori, Dorian Davies, um, so from Gecko Rouge. I just, um, I liked, you know, like I've never been to the UK, but I would like to go someday and I would love to go see Stonehenge, um, and maybe some of the other stone circles. Um, they just really do hold a fascination for me. And I saw this image and I was like, oh, that would be a fun gecko rouge to get. Um, so this is on an 18 count white Ada. I started it on um, Valentine's Day this year. Um, and I think, like I said, this might actually be the most meager start. Now, um, this is another one of those that I don't have the actual numbers on because I lost it in the conversion from devices and I have not gone back in and like re-highlighted all my stitches yet. Um, so, uh, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like 200 stitches, um, so this is probably less than many hands. Um, I don't think I, I think I didn't have this on my Whipco board. I think I missed it. And then um, I actually swapped it in to, um, I swapped it out for a different project on my non-full coverage, even though I know this is full coverage. Um, but I swapped it in on that board for an open space. So I will get some work done on this yet this year. Um, but I just don't, yeah, I don't, I mean, it hasn't been called yet. How about that? But, um, I will re, I will get numbers, um, for you and tell you more about it the next time that you see me. So this is just super baby little start, um, on my gecko rouge. Sorry. Sorry for all the reaching. <laughs> you all know my pain, I think. Um, maybe next time I won't bring all the bags. I'll just bring the Q-snaps. <laughs> since most of mine are in Q-snaps. Okay, uh, the next one is another monster, monster piece. Um, I think there might be a sale for this, but I am terrible, you guys. I'm terrible at Instagram. I don't really understand how it works. I feel like I need a tutorial, which is weird because usually I'm like reasonably up on, you know, the new stuff and can, can, figure it out but for some reason Instagram has eluded me um so like hashtags and stuff like that I, I'm terrible I'm not good at posting it Instagram or Facebook I'm a lurker I love to <laughs> I love to lurk and look at other people's stuff but I don't do a lot of posting myself um I'm gonna try and get better about that and I'm also gonna try and be really good about um you know like following up on comments and answering questions um if my YouTube channel starts to get some traction but this is the Heaven, Earth, Heaven and Earth Designs. This is um, Super Sized Dark Jungle Temple and Tigers. This is the max color version. Um, so it is monstrous. Um, my, flo my floss monsters literally like fill up this whole, this whole lovely Kaylee Tensage bag. I don't know if you can see Mandalorian with Grogu. Love it. 
Um, so this is where I'm at so far. And I love that you can um, almost immediately see some flowers and stuff coming in. But yeah, this is, oh, this is going to be so much fun to work on, I know, because there's just so much going on in it. Um, so this is on 20 Count Easy Guide. I started this on March 6th of this year, and I have 1,818 stitches out of 713, 286 stitches, and this puts me at 0.25%. So just a baby start, but I like, oh, these flowers are going to be gorgeous. So pretty. Um, oh, and the artist on that is, um, is it Kiro Marchetti? I think it's Kiro. Um, yeah, beautiful. Okay. Um, so let me, I need to go get my other basket again. I'll be right back. Okay. I am back. Thank you for bearing with me. So my next project is a pain-free pain crafts pattern. Um, this is another Stanley Morrison dragon. This is garlic dragon. Um, I think that Teresa um, is doing this one. Teresa Little Stitches. So I am doing mine on um, 18 count Ada. Also don't know which one this is, probably Fortnite Fabric. Um, started this on March 25th of 2023, um, clearly still in the background. I'm at 2,718 stitches out of 95,900, which puts me at 2.83%. So it doesn't look like much. Um, this is, it did go really quickly when I was stitching on it because, you know, there's not a ton of colors. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be beautiful. And I don't, I'm not like actually a huge garlic fan to cook with. Um, but I will say like, I just, I loved the moon. I loved the colors. Um, so I had to pick up the garlic dragon cause I just, I loved it. Um, so my next one is not a full coverage. I know. See, I do do not full coverage sometimes. So this is um, Tortoise Tower by Plum Street Samplers. I love Paulette. I have a ton, I have a ton of patterns from Plum Street that I will be working on. I have finished um, Oh my gosh, I can't remember which one it is now. I have one of these finished. One of the one of the animal stacks finished. Rue. I did the Rue crew. That's the one. Um and I Picked this one as my um, second one because I love tortoises and turtles. Um, I have a huge uh, tattoo on my back that is like three turtles with waves. And it's like my favorite thing ever. Um, like no regrets. So this is where I'm at so far. This is on a 32 count linen. Um, it is an R&R &R linen, which I didn't realize was so hard to find. Um, my uh, So like my closest... Well, one of my closest needle workshops is Lynn's um, in Madison, Wisconsin. And she actually does get R&R. &R. Um, and so I got this from her. This is a vintage gray. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice linen. Um, I can see why people enjoy stitching on it. Um, so yeah, this is Tortoise Tower. Started this on... Um, Oh, it looks like I also started this one on March 25th of 23. That must have been a weekend day. <laughs> so I got a couple a couple done, or a couple started on that day. Um, so yeah, I would imagine you'll be seeing more Plum Street samplers from me. I have, Like I said, I have a whole bunch of them. Okay, my next one, also not a full coverage. This is by... Um, by the Bay um, Needle Art. So this one is Spring Cove. I have all of the co I have all the seasons for the Cove series that she does, and I <laughs> like I just love the whimsy in them. Um, but like these are little crabs up in the tree. What? They're so cute, and these cranes are lovely. 
Um, so I just, I, I do have several, um, these are by Donna Bayless, um, which is by the Bay Needle Art, and this is where I'm at so far. So I have the first little, the first little crabby in. I've got most of the first crane in. Obviously, I haven't done back stitching yet. Um, again, let me see. Maybe I have it in the bag. Um, yes, this is also a Fortnite fabric. Um, this is an 18 count Ada. It is called Cresting Wave. Um, which has some blues in it and some grays. Um, it's not like, it's not really showing very well on camera. Always the struggle to see the colors, but I love this one too. Um, it's a fun little, fun little project to work on. Um, and will definitely be making an appearance next year on my Whipco board. So the next one that I have is a Carolyn Manning design. So it is full coverage, but obviously not the size of, you know, like most of the full coverages that I work on. So Peacock, Peacock Topaz, Carolyn Manning designs. Um, this is on another uh, Fortnite fabric. This one I do know, it's called Seagrass. So um, it is not gonna show up on camera, but it is a very pale green. Um, it's actually really pretty. So I started this on April 8th of 23. Um, this one is pattern keeper compatible. So I have 1,120 stitches out of 35,721 stitches, which puts me at 3.14%. And I just love, I love these. Um, I do, I did pick up several more um, Carolyn Mannings. So you'll probably, I'm going to try to limit myself to just one at a time. <laughs> But we'll see how that goes, you know, best best laid plans and all that. Um, okay, so here is where I'm going to uh, deviate a little bit from the uh, chronological order. So um, I am doing the monthly Quakers from um, from Wendy, so from from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. So Wendy, Wendy Petros. Um, so at the beginning of the year, I was doing really good. I got April or January through April done, like in the month or close to the month that they that I started them. So I'm starting one each month. I have it on on the full coverage or on the non full coverage whip go board. I just have twelve spaces for monthly Quaker, and then whichever number gets called that that month. For the Quaker and I do a little bit of shuffling around if one didn't get called that was a Quaker number um, just so that you know as part of the Whipco board um, but <laughs> when May hit that was the month that I was moving and it was total and absolute chaos um, so I from after that have not had a chance like I have not finished one of the monthly Quakers um, since then which that's okay I will put them on um, the the Whipco board for next year. Um, so you're going to be seeing um, May. So here's May. And um, I apologize, you keep seeing the top of my head here. So this is where I'm at so far. Um, all of these are stitched on 32 count over the moon linen from Color and Cotton, which is just a lovely um, gray. So one thing you'll see for me is that I tend to go for cool neutrals over warm neutrals. So you'll ha hardly ever see me with like a super beigey fabric or um, I just, it doesn't uh, appeal to me and that's okay. Like I know that some of those pieces are absolutely beautiful on the beigey fabrics, but I probably won't stitch on it. Uh, I will if I can, might would probably switch it out for a cooler neutral. So this is where I'm at for May. Um, I love the colors for May. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting back to that one. So the next one is June. And this is where I'm at so far. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not, I don't iron. Um, I will, you know, like I iron at the end, but I don't iron. 
um, in between. So I got, the, I got the little cat motif, which is really cute. Um, and the, you know, like the whole center motif. And then I got started on one of the other motifs and then, um, and then June was over. June also did not see a ton of stitching. Um, not as much as I'm kind of used to because of moving and trying to get everything organized and all that fun stuff. Um, so the next one is July. Um, so this is where I'm at. Again, I didn't make a whole lot of progress for July. Um, July, it's like, it's all like big motifs on this one. So it, it's a lot. Um, these are deceptively, you know, for a small, there's a deceptive amount of stitching in there. <laughs> um, and then we have August. Now, I would like some advice. So I think I mentioned earlier, I was always an Ada stitcher. And so I'm, I've been stitching all these on linen and I messed up this one a little bit. So let's see, on this side over here, I'm off like a half a stitch. And I think I can fudge it. I think I can fudge the inside. I think I can make this fit. But what I'm not sure of is is it noticeable? Like, can you see that I'm off a half a stitch? Like it's, it's like up in here somewhere. And by the time I found it, I was like all the way over here, um, or like down in here, like I'd come back down this way and this is where it didn't meet up. Right. And I was like, uh, where did I mess it up? Yeah. Can you tell, like, can I get away with fudging it or should I, <laughs> like, I probably won't frog it. I'd probably just restart it. Cause I, yeah, I like frogging that amount just makes me nauseous a little bit. So I'd probably restart it. Um, but if if you guys don't don't notice it, do you think I can get away with just kind of fudging that inner the inner motif? OK, let me know in the comments because um, I'm really curious since I'm so new. I feel like, you know, like as a as a somebody who's been stitching for <laughs> almost 30 years, I, when it comes to linen, I'm just still a little bit mystified and trying to find my way with it. So any, um, any advice would be much appreciated. Okay. We're getting close to the end. I don't, I haven't been counting. I don't know if you guys have been counting. I probably should have, but I didn't. Um, so, but we're, we're getting close to the end. Um, so the next one that I have is, I'm missing one in here, you guys. I'm missing one. I don't know where it is. I mean, I have the, I have it sitting next to me, but I can't find the card. I wonder if I like jumped over it. Cuz I know I started this like in 2022. So where did it go? Okay, so bear with me. I totally did jump over it. Uh ah. Okay, bear with. I'm just we're going to we're going to jump to this one um cuz I t I totally missed it. Um so this is a Heaven and Earth design. I'm pretty sure there is a style for it, but I don't remember what the hashtag is because, like I said, I'm terrible with the hashtags. This is another uh, Carol Marchetti uh, pattern. This is Spirit of Autumn. Um, this is actually a little out of my comfort zone. Oranges and russets and things are not my colors, but, like, this came out and... Those little foxes are so stinking cute and those leaves are absolutely gorgeous and like so um moving you know like moving back to my home like the house that I grew up in um now so we moved in when I was like 11 um but of course I had been at this house since birth because it was my grandparents house and so we're in this valley and like across the valley is just this like lovely hillside with all these beautiful trees. And like in the fall, it looks like a painting. It looks like, like not with the foxes, obviously, but it looks like this, like it doesn't look real some days because it's just so gorgeous. So I think that's why that this really spoke to me. 
um, even though I'm not like a huge fan of stitching with oranges and russets and colors like that, but I, I do love this. I actually um, made quite a lot of uh, progress on it, all things considered. Um, so I started this on September 21st of 2022. Um, this is on a 20 count blue cashmere Ada from Flag Art. Um, and I have 2,673 stitches out of 333,450 stitches. That's really only 0.8%. Um, but you know, that's over 2,500 stitches y'all. That's, that's a lot. Um, so yeah, sorry, sorry that got out of order. Best laid plans. Okay, back to the next one. Um, this is the Butterfly Garden from the Drawn Thread. This is, um, this is the one whip go that has been called this year that I did not, have not finished yet in the month that it was called. This was called in May. Um, and as I said, May was a little chaos because I moved. I love these patterns. Like I have a bunch of the garden ones. Um, I did another one, not one of the gardens. It's called Snow Day. Um, maybe at some point I'll pull out some of the finishes that I've had um, in a future video. But I, I just love the, the look of these garden ones. Um, this is on a 32 count uh, linen. I think it is just the... Um, like silver gray linen. This is such a meager, oh my God, this is truly the most meager start that I've got. Um, so I did decide to um, start on the left. So let's see, I'm, I'm like just up here and I only, like I don't, I only have some of those flowers and some of the leaves started um, on this. So <laughs> Um, I'm also was getting used to trying to do the specialty stitches, which I'm not like, I'm not, I don't do embroidery. So, um, I'm trying to learn how to do a lot of these specialty stitches and I'll be like, the instructions are really, really well done and pretty easy to follow. Um, but it is a little, I think that's why I haven't gone back to it and like finished that whip go score or whip go, uh, square out because I'm a little intimidated by, the specialty stitches. So I started that on the 18th of June. Like I didn't even start it in May because I was so busy. So I started it. Um, and I didn't at the time um, for the non full coverage have like a specific amount of days that I needed to work on something. Um, and clearly I, so I started it, I got one day in, I've kind of just done a blanket, like five days for each square. Um, so I still have four more days that I need to put in, um, for May on Butterfly Garden. I will get there. I will get, I, I want a full blocked out board by the time, uh, the first of the year rolls around. That is my goal. Okay. Uh, another Kaylee Tensage bag. I do love, I do love the Star Wars themed bags. Um, so this one is a Hade. It is, um, this is a mini. It's the offering, an offering to Venus um, by John uh, Godward. So he has a lot of like these kind of ancient uh, Greek looking um, like fancy ladies. Um, and this one really spoke to me a lot. I love the colors and her dress. I, yeah, like I love this. So this is a mini offering to Venus. Um, this is again on an 18 count Ada. This is Brain Fog by Mystic Fabrics. Um, and I started this on July 1st. So this was a new start for the year. It was on the Whipco board to be a new start. I got 1,000 84 stitches done out of 105,525, which puts me at 1.03%. So I do love this painting. I actually have um, several other John Godward um, patterns. Um, some of them are from Hayde, some of them are from Golden Kite. Um, and yeah, I look forward to stitching some more of these because. They're really pretty. Um, 
I, I really do like them a lot. Okay, this next one, um, it came out maybe at Market. Sorry. Um, and I, I saw this pattern and it just made me la like laugh out loud. Um, so this is called Probably Haunted. Um, it says, if one door closes and another door opens, your house is probably haunted. And I think, you know, like part of it was I knew like when it came out, I knew I was going to be moving into the, into a new house, um, which, you know, I don't, I don't really believe it. But if any house is going to be haunted, it's probably this one because my grandma um, used to take care of little old ladies, like, like almost like a nursing home. And um, so I asked my mom once, I'm like, did, did the little old ladies like die in the house? And mom was like, oh yeah, they did. They just didn't have any family. And you know, like it was different times back then. So, you know, like we didn't rush them, rush them off to the hospital. I mean, it was almost like they were in a long-term long hospice with my grandma. So, you know, she had like um, a really old hospital bed that had cranks at the foot and at the head um, to, you know, raise and lower the head and the foot. There was, was a wheelchair in the house. Um, so we used to have like wheelchair races. There's, um, like a long hallway where all the bedrooms and bathrooms are. Um, and so we could like race the wheelchair up and down. <laughs> we used to get in trouble for it. Um, anyway, so <laughs> it just like, it just struck my fancy as this like really cute pattern and something that I totally needed to do, um, for my new house. So this is where I'm at. I have, this is as wide as it will be. So I kind of, like started the letters and then came down and then worked my way across to the far end. Um, and then I am doing the called for um, with like the fabric is different. So this is an 18 count um, Da Vinci from Picture This Plus. Um, it calls for a different one that's more solid purple, but I really liked the modeling on the Da Vinci. Um, so this is Little Stitch Girl, um, Jordan Nicole, Probably Haunted. Um, the one floss substitution that I'm doing is um, in the ghost and then eventually in the moon, um, the ghost is glow in the dark. And then I'm going to do glow in the dark for the moon as well. So I'm using the petite treasure braid, um, glow in the dark floss. And cause I thought that would be fun, um, to have it be glow in the dark. So that's where I'm at. I, I probably will pull this out, um, over the month of October and maybe September, depending on, um, how my goals go for September because I would like to get it finished. Um, it's just such a cute, <laughs> it's just, it's so cute. Um, but yeah, like I don't do a lot of, um, I don't do a lot of seasonal stitching. Um, I clearly you've probably noticed that like, I don't have a lot of Christmas stuff. I don't have a lot of Thanksgiving or, you know, like spirit, the spirit of autumn one is probably the closest one you'd get for Thanksgiving. Um, I just, it, I, I have a lot of seasonal patterns. I just don't stitch them. I don't know why it's just not something that I've really gotten into yet. Um, but that one, that one, I just, I couldn't resist. Okay, so this next one, um, this is actually going to be a gift. So if for some reason some of my family find this um, and uh, the family that is going to be getting married next May, um, May of 2024, please look away because this is for you. Um, but this is um, the, this is new from Jan Hicks this year. This is the love is love um, pattern. And, um, this is for my cousin and her fiance. Um, it is beautiful. Like, and it's actually, it's so much fun to stitch on. Um, these patterns are amazing. Like the, the patterns in these columns are just a lot. They're a lot of fun to stitch. Um, so I am doing this on a 32 count be stitch me linen called morning fog. And this, it is more green than it is showing up on camera. It's really pretty. Um, I actually drove down to the Bestitch Me store, which if you, I mean, it's a, it's a little over two hours, I think, for me to get down there. Um, totally worth it. I spent way too much money. <laughs> um, this was not the only fabric that I got that day. Um, so I started this on July 15th. Um, I need to, this is really, like, if I have a focus piece, this is it because um, I need to be able to get it framed 
Um, and I know that the people that I, so I take my framing to Lynn's and I know that they have a bit of a backlog. So I need to make sure that I get this done, hopefully like before the end of the year so that I can get on the list to get it finished. Um, so I'm at, um, this is Pattern Keeper compatible. I did buy the um, PDF version of this. Um, and I've got 3,657 stitches out of 7,262 stitches. The other thing, so that is 50.3%. The other thing that I'm going to say is that um, I did a color conversion um, from the, I think they're Weeks Dye Works. I think it calls for Weeks. Um, I bought the, I bought the called for and I was just like, I, I wanted this to be just a little more special since it was going to be a wedding gift. Um, so I actually ordered um, from Silks for You. They have, they actually have two different like rainbow packs in their mini skeins. And so I ordered both of them because, um, I wanted to, I wanted to find the right, the right color combinations. And then, um, they didn't have a brown in either one of those, um, color in either one of those rainbow packs, but this one, it does call for the brown kind of up in the in the triangle part. Um, so that's, I got this one. This is called, I think it's like a, I mean, they don't have names for them. I think of it as like cocoa bean. Um, but so these are, these are all silks for you. And if anybody is interested in which ones these are, um, just message me in the comments and I can reply with which, which PRs these are. Um, they are all available. None of them are like you can only get them in that pack. Um, but these are, these are beautiful. I, I really love the silks for you silks. Um, they're, they might be my favorite silks to work with, to be very honest. Um, but oh, look at like the purple, this red is so beautiful and vibrant. This blue is amazing. Like it's all, they're all amazing, but yeah. So I did color convert, um, from the week's dye works to the silks and it was worth totally worth it. I, I, I love their silk. Okay. Um, I think I only have two. I only have two left. So, um, the next one I have is a pattern from Maxine Gad, who she's a love, she's a brilliant artist. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of like like the clown ones, like the sad clown ones. Um, mostly cause I just really don't like clowns. Like the cottage garden sampling, um, snowman that came out, like, um, so Misty from Mystic Fabrics has us on, like gave us the option to do auto ship on that. And I was like, yes, please sign me up. Just, you know, like drop ship it every month. And then, um, she was so cute. Cause when the clown came out, she actually like messaged her Facebook group and was like, Hey, um, I know not everybody's into clowns, so if you want to opt out of the clown um, pattern, just drop, like, make a message, up, like, put a comment on this post. And I was like, yeah, you can, you can drop me, because I, even the snowman clown, I just couldn't do it. Um, anyway, so I don't, I, I don't particularly care for, like, her Harlequin mask ones, because it just feels a little too clowny for me. That's, again, that's just me doesn't mean that they're not for other people but the this is one of like her um fairy series um this is Titania and I just oh, look at how beautiful she is I love it um so Maxine Gad Titania this is um an 18 count this is also a mystic fabric but apparently I did not write down which one it is. My apologies. Um, so I started this on, this was a new start um, off the Whipco board for July. So this was started on 720 of 23. I only have 726 stitches done out of 1,000, 100,000, 177,000 stitches. And I'm at 0.41%. Um, so I know this is an 18 count. I know it's from Misty. I don't remember 
she could probably tell us which one it was if she were to see this video because she's that good with her fabrics, even in my not so great lighting. But this one's going to be beautiful. Um, looking forward to pulling that one out again um, and working on it some more. So that'll, I mean, next year probably. Um, okay. This is the last one. And I literally started this yesterday. This is another um, new start off of my Whipco board. You guys, I had a bunch of, like, I put a bunch of new starts on my Whipco board. Um, like, I had them all kitted up. I was ready to go, thinking they would get kind of uh, called throughout the year. And then they all got, like, they're all going to end up getting called at the end of the year. <laughs> so I'm going to have um, new starts, at least one new start each month until the end of the year for my Whipco board. <laughs> Um, this month I have two new full coverage starts. So this one is um, the Story Keep Tiki Beach Sunset. I know um, Alara just started this one as well. And I, I've seen this one. I've seen some people work on this one. I love this. Um, it is like, like I've looked at the whole, um, the whole image for this and I didn't want to stitch the whole thing but when I saw this story keep I was like yeah that I, I totally want to do that um so this is only had one day because I was working on it last night um but it is on um 18 count Fortnite fabric called eccentric stock eccentric sky this is another Amy Stewart um I did pretty good I think I got 423 stitches in last night there are 62,400 stitches. It puts me at 0.68%. Um, I'm hoping to get to 2% by the end of my five days for this whip go call, um, which I should be able to do because with the long weekend, um, I'm probably going to do a fair amount of stitching um, later today. And then, um, sorry, I'm on call, so I'm getting paged. So I need to pause. Okay, I'm back. Um, you probably didn't notice, but so anyway, this is um <clears throat> this is Tiki Beach Sunset. Um, like I said, 18 count Fortnite fabric, eccentric sky. Um, still have more work to put in on this uh for my whip go call this month, so five days, and I really do want to get to two percent. So I don't usually put like percentage goals on myself, but I feel like this is because it's a story keep and it's not a huge project. Um, and we've got a holiday weekend where I have a little extra time to do some stitching. Um, I would like to hit 2% on this one. So that is, um, my current, my final current whip. Um, so I did bring, um, my whip go boards. So... This is my full coverage uh, whip go board. So um, the white squares that don't have um, a month in them are yet to be called. The green squares with the like black, um, those are all the ones that are completed. So I have finished all goals for my full coverage whip go board so far this year. Um, so I do have, you know, a couple of... Uh, columns finished but I'm hoping to get a, a completed board this year that is the goal so um the the other project that I have um that I I'm sorry I forgot to grab the um cover page for it it is the um tale of the red swans which is another Amy Stewart it is not one that I've seen a whole lot of people stitching on um it is, I did get the super size max color because I'm a glutton for punishment, but it is, pardon me, it is so beautiful. Um, again, it's got some very Asian um, kind of themes to it. Lots of greens. Um, and then you've got this like just pop of color with the red swans. I apologize. You'll see it next time because um, I will have started it for um, this, this whip go round. Um, literally on here, there are one, two, three, four, uh, other new start, <laughs> new starts that I do have all cutted up and ready to go. Um, the only two that are not new starts are the many hands and the spirit of autumn. So, um, I'm kind of hoping that 14 gets called next month so that I can work on spirit of autumn in October. Um, but 
you know, it's that's the luck of the luck of the random number generator. Um, so we'll see. And then as far as my um, non full coverage, um, so you can see butterfly garden is the <laughs> is the only one that has been called that I have not completed outside of our my September goals. Um, so this is where let's see. Um, I did I did insert the Solstice Pentre uh, Gecko Rouge kit that I had the very minimal start on um, and forgot to add it to my Whipco like my full coverage Whipco board. So um, that one is up to be called sometime this year. And then I have monthly Quakers, so obviously three of those left. And then um, work on the Elemental Dragon's Air. And then I do have one that I finished but has not been called yet, which is the um, this one up here. So this was just a little um, non-full coverage pattern. This is the one that I finished for my best friend called, um, it's called my best friend. Um, super cute. It's very, very tiny. It's just a little, like, it's got a flower on the side and it says, um, you'll always be my best friend. Dot, dot, dot. You know too much, <laughs> which, um, you know, she's been my best friend for over 20 years and it is a totally appropriate sentiment. Um, she got a kick out of it. So that was a lot of fun. We had a little girls week in Vegas, had a blast. Um, recommend. Oh, okay. I totally lied. I do have, look at me. I was more prepared than I thought I was. So this is the, um, the mock-up for that tail of the red swans. Um, oh God, I love this. I can't wait to start it. Um, so this, like I said, super size max color. I'm still, I'm still working on, um, getting the floss all kitted up onto their, um, floss drops. So I like, Y'all, if you like floss drops, um, I get all, like pretty much all of my floss drops are from um, Adam Hart Cross Stitch. Um, she also has a floss tube. I originally found her on TikTok. She's super, I love, you know, like she's a lot of fun. Um, and I really like her floss drops a lot. I have a variety of them. Um, I've got some of the floss chips. I've got some of the floss hearts. I don't really do the bobbins because um, I don't bobbinate. I hate um, kinked up thread <laughs> with a fiery burning passion. Um, I literally have like three or four boxes of floss um, that is bobbinated that just sits there. Like I never go to it. I never use the floss in there because I hate the bobbins. Um, I like I should just take it to like a like a thrift store and, and make somebody's day or like he stash it or something. Um, they're all numbered They're you know, they're, yeah, I just, I don't like, I don't like bobbins again. That's just me. So I'm going to, uh, reference my notes here. Um, so rest of your plans, um, obviously want to complete my whip go goals, um, which I t totally think is do doable. Um, as far as like a focus, like I said, my love is love piece, um, by Jan Hicks, which is the gift for, um, it's a wedding gift. So need to get that one finished so that I can get up to the framers. Um, so that one I will like keep out and just have it like in my whip, go in my whip basket, um, and work on it. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to have like a daily stitch count goal on it. Um, it goes pretty fast. So I'm about ready to move the Q-snap <clears throat> so that I can, you know, work down some more. And, um, yeah, I, I think, honestly, like, if it's not done by the end of September, it'll be early October. It, it, it has not taken me very long um, to actually complete what I have so far, and I'm at 50%. So um, that's probably the main focus is and then like I said I've you know like I'm gonna be doing they're all kitted I have all the floss but I have not um put everything on floss drops for the rest of the new starts um I am super excited I mean I'm excited for all of my new starts but there's one that um I was a little bummed that it hasn't been called already I was hoping it would get called earlier in the year but there's this um it's called Shakespearean fantasy and I don't, I don't, I apologize. I totally should have pulled it, but, um, it is a, I 
think it's a Thomas Kincaid. I think it is. I think it's a Thomas Kincaid. Is that right? Oh, I don't, and I, I left my phone in the other room, so I can't even look it up really quick. Um, but it's a, it's basically a, like, it's a tree that has, like, 17 or 18 different scenes from, um, various Shakespeare plays. Um, so, you know, like, you've got Hamlet, and you've got The Tempest, and you've got Macbeth, and, like, they're, you know, Taming of the Shrew, like, um, I do love Shakespeare. I have not seen every single Shakespeare play that's out there, but I've seen a majority of them. And I actually, uh, there's a somewhat local, um, theater, like out, it's an outdoor theater that has been, um, that's in the area. And I actually worked out there a couple summers. Um, so like I've seen Hamlet over 30 times. Well, most of Hamlet over 30 times because Hamlet was one of the shows that was playing one of the summers that I worked there. Um, but I still go back and, and watch Hamlet, um, when they do a new presentation of it because it's just, ugh, it's amazing. So, um, I do have a very special place in my heart, um, for Shakespeare and I've, I've like, I've had a puzzle of this that I never have managed to finish, uh, putting together. I do have a bunch of puzzles. Um, one of these, again, mostly it's been in the past. I lived in apartments and I didn't have the space. Um, so I haven't ever really managed to finish a puzzle, but I'm hoping, you know, like that's probably going to be another thing that I'll pull out over the winter, um, and pick away at. I feel like, um, the way that I have my like desk set up, is actually part, it's in the kitchen. Um, I have a really big kitchen mostly because we tore down, um, walls that used to be my bedroom. It was a bedroom right off the kitchen from when I was a kid. Uh, we, my parents remodeled the kitchen and they took the walls down and expanded the kitchen. Um, and so now we've got this really big kitchen. So I have like my desk kind of in a corner and then I've got one of my tables next to the desk. And I almost feel like I could get away with doing some puzzling on the table that's next, to, next to my desk while I'm like listening to meetings that I don't have to, you know, like be demoing something for. Um, so I work in information systems for one of the health systems in the area, uh, which is why I mentioned earlier that I'm on call and I had to go uh, take care of that. So um, I, yeah, I kind of feel like I can put a puzzle on that table and just sort of pick away at it during some of the meetings um, while I'm listening um, to meetings since I work from home. So anyway, um, I really am hoping that that Shakespeare in fantasy does not get like gets called sooner and not in December <laughs> because um, I've had it kitted up for a while. Um, I, and I almost feel like, you know how um, you like, you find something and you're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it, but like, I'm excited to start it. But at the same time, like I'm nervous to start it and I don't, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I, I finally was like, okay, I'm just putting it on the Whipco board so that when it gets called, I will absolutely like, it, I'm going to start it. Um, so anyway, long ramble short. Um, I will have several new starts still through the rest of this year. Um, I have not determined officially what my cadence will be for my floss tube videos. Um, at this point, I'm kind of thinking monthly because, um, you know, like I, I only have like four projects that I know I'm going to work on every month with, uh, my Whipgo calls. Um, and so, and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to change things up a little bit next year, or maybe add another board, um, for next year and have, a, or like, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm still working out plans for like 2024. So, um, more on that in a, in a later video. Um, but for now, I think, I think I'll probably do monthly, um, at this point, just so that I actually have things to show you. Um, I'm not going to do any haul today. Um, really the only haul that I have is my new fabric from, um, from Missy for the fabric of the month. But I, this video is probably going to be super, super long. I don't know how long it is because I've had to break it up into chunks um, when I go get my new baskets. And each time I like pause and restart, it, it restarts the timer. So 
Um, it's probably going to be pretty long, pretty long, but, um, thank you everybody for, um, watching my, my first movie. Um, cause I, I suspect that this will probably be a movie length. Um, but I, I love a good whip parade. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope to see, uh, comments. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, um, please do comment them. I will do my very, very best to get back to everybody. Um, I also will do my very best to call out, um, a lot of like some of the, the other Fostubers that I mentioned in this video. Um, but I'm, I'm so new. Like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how to do all of the things yet. Um, so Hopefully I will get better um, as I learn. Um, so yes, I will do my best um, for these initial videos to get more information and have, you know, like information in the description box. So I think that is everything. Um, oh, I guess subscribe, like, and subscribe, right? Where everybody's supposed to say like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not in this uh, I mean, again, it would be wonderful to have a bunch of subscribers, but I'm more, um, like just sharing my joy of this hobby that we all do is a lot of fun. So thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend. If you're watching this over uh, Labor Day weekend, um, stay happy, stay well, and I will see you next time. Thank you.